European leaders have agreed to sanction Belarus in response to its forced diversion of a Ryanair flight and the arrest of a dissident journalist. Now, reacting to what they called a hijacking, member states decided to take the following measures. Belarusian airlines will be banned from using EU airspace and airports. Economic sanctions and travel restrictions will be imposed on a number of individuals linked to the plane's diversion. And a 3 billion euro EU investment package for Belarus will remain on hold. Now, according to the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, that will continue to be the case until the country, quote, turns democratic. Now, the European Council is demanding the immediate release of the detained journalist Raman Pratasevich. His supporters fear for his safety. The 27 leaders of the European Union do not always find common ground, but their outrage was mutual over Belarus after the country intercepted a passenger jet flying between EU states and detained an exiled blogger and activist on board. The judgment was unanimous. This is an attack on democracy. This is an attack on freedom of expression. And this is an attack on European sovereignty. Thank Ursula von der Leyen did not mince words as she announced the EU's response to the actions of Belarus leader Alexander Lukashenko. The European Council decided that there will be additional sanctions on individuals that are involved in the hijacking, but this time also on businesses and economic entities that are financing this regime. The EU is also closing its airspace to Belarusian airlines and will deny them access to EU airports. Some European airlines like Lufthansa, SAS or KLM announced they would avoid Belarusian airspace. This was triggered on Sunday when exiled activist Raman Pratasevich was arrested, traveling from Greece to Lithuania. The commercial flight he was on was grounded by a Belarusian warplane because of an alleged bomb threat. No explosives were found on the aircraft and EU leaders are demanding answers. Raman Pratasevich must be released immediately. All the explanations for the forced landing of the Ryanair flight are implausible. The same applies to his partner Sofia Sapega. We are demanding their release. A video appeared on a Belarusian pro-government telegram channel with the imprisoned Pratasevich. Dark marks are visible on his forehead. The opposition says Pratasevich was under pressure when he gave the statement that he was treated according to the law. In the past, Belarusian government had already forced opposition leader Svetlana Tichanovskaya to appear in a similar video while she was in custody. We don't know what's happening to Raman. He could be interrogated by KGB. He may be tortured now as an enemy of Lukashenko. We are dealing with the harshest regime in Europe in decades. We will discuss migration. Von der Leyen also announced that the EU put on hold a 3 billion euro economic package for Belarus until the country, quote, turns democratic. Earlier I spoke to our Brussels uh, bureau chief, Alexandra von Naum, and I asked her if the sanctions on Belarus are as severe as they could have been. No, there were more options on the table. Um, yesterday night, for example, France uh, brought forward a proposal to suspend all traffic, including ground transit from Belarus to the European Union. So that was also on the table. However, I think it's fair to say that some member states considered such a measure too extreme. And we have to keep in mind what is the nature of the European Union's foreign policy making to have a strong and also an united response, you have to have all 27 members on board and they often agree on measures that all members can agree on. And I think in this case it was very important for the EU leaders to present a united front on Belarus. Right, that was our Brussels Bureau Chief. I'm now joined by journalist Hannah Lubakova. She is in Minsk. Uh, good morning to you, Hannah. So how is the news of the EU sanctions being received in Belarus? Well, Belarusians uh, definitely want the impunity to stop and they expected a strong and consequent response, very tangible, practical steps from the EU, from Western countries, from the democratic world. Um, so I would say that they uh, did expect sanctions, the sanctions list be 
expanded, be broadened by uh, by by the EU, by the US and other countries. Uh, when it comes to individual and targeted smart economic sanctions, uh, Belarusians definitely want uh, those sanctions be well thought. Uh, be painful for the regime, not for the people. And it's really important to target oligarchs. It's really important to target Lukashenko's finances um, and kind of the finances of his cronies abroad. So, so that's kind of the um, common, I would say, well, opinion here. Uh, when it comes to banning flights over Belarus and kind of forbidding Belarusians to 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 come to Europe, closing the borders, I I, I would say that here uh, we should be cautious because many people flee the country and they uh, they are looking for a refuge in the mm. EU because the, you know in fear of prosecution in Belarus. Um, and another important issue is that uh, they want the agenda of the new free and fair presidential elections uh, come back. Uh, on, on kind of the EU agenda, mm. and uh, so that the talks about the new elections are resumed. Hannah, Belarusian authorities have released a, a video of Raman Pratisevich, uh, as mentioned in our report. It was likely filmed uh, under duress, and I'd like to tell our viewers that that is the reason why we're not going to be showing you that video. But Hannah, tell us uh, about that video. Well, I've known Roman for years, and it was um, horrible to see him in such a condition. He looks horrified. He looks very distressed. His uh, voice trembles. Uh, he has marks over his face, over his forehead, which might mean that uh, he might have been bitten. Um, then all of a sudden, he says that uh, he doesn't have any health problems. Uh, he has been treated well. And then he um, kind of confesses that he took part in uh, plotting riots in Belarus, which is punishable up to 15 years in prison. So it all kind of raises questions about whether, you know, what, what's happening to him, whether he has been tortured, whether he has been threatened. Um, let's remember that he is on the KGB terrorist list, so it might also kind of scare him what might happen to him. And also his, his girlfriend, his travel companion, has been detained, so she's also not safe at the moment. And it might also cause a lot of distress on him. All right, that's the journalist Hannah Lubakova uh, talking to us from Minsk. Thank you, Hannah.